Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 84 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. As always, I'm your host, Brent Coley, an elementary principal in Southern California, and super excited because just last episode, we had Jessica Gomez on. And Jessica, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here again. Yes, we're part two. So... Um, if you haven't, if, if you're listening to this, you're like, Jessica, wait a second, Jessica, who is Jessica Gomez? Jessica Gomez is an amazing elementary principal in the Colton Joint Unified School District in Southern Aww. California. And if you haven't listened to the previous episode, to 83, it's all on building campus culture, classroom culture. We had an amazing conversation where we each shared some stories about ways that that teachers or leaders can build culture. If you haven't listened to 83, I would say stop now, <laughs> meaning stop listening to this one, go back and listen to number 83, because Jessica's gonna, and she introduces herself there, you can kind of learn more about her and, and, and her background, and you can get a whole bunch of ways that you can build culture. And we had such a good, it was like 35 minutes, Jessica, and we're like, yeah, okay, we not need to enough time. <laughs> We, we're like, we need to stop, but we still have like a whole list of stuff. Let's come back for part two. So here we are. We're, so let's, <laughs> let's jump right back in. Give us, let's do it. I'm going to throw it to you. So give us another way that a teacher or a leader could build campus or classroom culture. Yeah. So you know what, Brent? I can't remember if I mentioned it in the last podcast. Did I talk about virtual postcards? Yes, I think, yes, you did the, the, the print did shop, okay. the print shop, yes, you did. The, mm -hmm. Okay, well, the print shop did, though, so I'm talking, so you're talking. Oh, virtual so, code, so we were, no. Yes, okay, so, so yes, we have, um, I think I talked about our outstanding student award, that's what it was, and so I would send the postcards home. Okay, that's episode 83. So, so what I did this year, I thought, okay, um, when we first went into um, distance learning back in the spring, um, I, I, I said, you know, I want to do so. I got this idea from a teacher again on Instagram. She was sending um, these virtual postcards using Google Slides to her students. I thought, mm. oh, what a genius idea. So I used Google Slides and um, I, actually, I did talk about it, didn't I? Maybe you, maybe you did talk about this one. Yes, I, I added my now voice to it. Okay, yes. There, yes, so let you me, did. Voice to it. Yes. So, okay. So, yeah. okay, so I didn't cross that off my list, but okay. Um, <laughs> anyways, so that's a really great idea. So we didn't hear 83, virtual post. Go back to 83. Literally, yes, because I did write a blog post on that. Okay, so um, actually something that we just did, it was the funnest thing. Um, I've never played Funko in my life, okay? I don't know if you've ever played Funko, I, but I've I never have, played Funko. <laughs> I have never played Funko. I have seen... Okay. I've seen posts. I've seen pictures of, of people who have, but I have never participated. So uh, there's quite a few teachers at my school who love Bunko and they have Bunko nights and all that. Well, one, um, my counselor really wanted to put together like these uh, monthly staff fun come together events and just said, let's have a Bunko night. I said, I'm all for Bunko night. I just don't know what that is. I don't know how to play it. <laughs> and my assistant principal said, no worries. But you, this involves dice. It, envi it involves like rotating tables. It involves like you need four people on a team. It's a little bit intricate. Well, my assistant says, no problem. I will make it all virtual. So she made the scorecard virtual. She found the virtual dice. We broke them out into breakout rooms, which, which was like instead of a table of four, it was a breakout room of four. It was the most amazing thing. And so when you're talking about um, bringing your staff together, this was one way of different people putting their heads together and say, how can we take something that we do in person and do it virtually, right? We talked a little bit about that last in the last episode about really taking those best practices that work in person and trying to see which of those would roll over to virtual. So we just had a, a bunko night just a week or two ago, and it was the funnest thing to watch them have fun. They had the um, the uh, virtual dice, and so they would share their screen, and you could see the ro the dice rolling, and it was just great fun. It's a great one hour get together. We had prizes, you know. My AP and I, we bought a few uh, Starbucks and In-N-Out cards. In-N-Out cards, 
are the hot ticket. <laughs> say. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. So we had never really bought an in and out gift cards, which is usually Starbucks. They all wanted an in and out card. So um, that was one thing. So an, a, a, just a fun staff night. I don't know if you guys have had any fun staff. You know, you th- we've. I love how you said things that we would normally do that you trans- transitioned that to virtual. I haven't done it with my staff, but I seen. I want to say it was Todd Schmidt. Um, oh, okay. Again, Todd. Really was good it about the painting? That. I've seen like painting, like where you go and you do like the whole painting yes. night together. Yes, and he did do that. Yeah, which which would be difficult to replicate virtually right now. But I think just the idea of bringing people together. Outside. Yeah, no matter what it is. Yeah, I, I know that we did, like, we have done staff barbecues. Again, tough to re- do to do virtually right now, but just uh, whether we've done potlucks at Thanksgiving, staff barbecues at the end of the year, where just getting them to schedule time to put the grade book away, put whatever needs to be done, put the, the, the spelling tests or whatever that you got to grade, put them to the side. And let's come and talk about something other than school. Exactly. And be normal, just yeah. non-educators. Yeah, <laughs> And exactly. just have fun with one another. Yeah, yeah. And they get a chance to interact with each other, especially right now. I think like I talked a little bit about, I, I don't know if I talked about it last time, but just the feeling of a little bit of disconnection. Yeah. And this is a great way to connect those teachers that are maybe not in the same grade level as well, that they haven't seen in person in a long time. We did something which I didn't have on my list, but it just sparked something. Uh, two truths and a lie. Have you have you done that with your staff? I haven't. About- I haven't played it, but share it, and then I'll share something because that sparked an idea on mine too. Yeah, we we did we did that a couple of years ago, where we have a, a weekly bulletin where we just here's everything that you need to know for the week type thing, mm-hmm. and to try to incentivize reading the bulletin <laughs> and just to make yeah. it make. Make a, a mundane thing a little more fun at the beginning of the year. We put out a Google form to all of the staff members and basically said, tell me two truths and a lie. And then each week I would take the spreadsheet, choose one of those staff members and put, all right, ladies and gentlemen, here's Brent's two truths and a lie. And you put these three things and then the staff has to vote. You have a different Google form. And they vote to try to guess which one of those three things is a lie. So, so it would be some. I, can't I love remember, that. Yeah, I can't remember what I. But it was such a great way. Like for me, it would be like um, uh, I've 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 been to France. I have my ear pierced, and I didn't try lobster until I got married. It's like, so which one of those things do you think is a lie? I've been to France, I have my ear pierced, or I didn't try lobster until I was married. I'm going to say that ear pierced. <laughs> uh, and that is actually true. I do have my ear Ooh, pierced. So for all the listeners, it's like, see it. I can't see it. No, I, I, I am not wearing an earring, but uh, uh-huh. I, I do have my ear pierced. I, pierced, I got my ear pierced in college, but... Uh, and I did not try lobster until I was married, but on our cruise for our honeymoon, but I've never been to France. So that's an example of, and then we would, like you said, buy that $5 Starbucks card, that $5 in and out yeah. as just a fun way to, to uh, have them read the bulletin, just to try to make yeah, the mundane so fun. Yeah, the mundane fun. So you were going to, yeah. that sparked and something so, that you were going to say. Um, it sparked an, um, something in me for our staff meetings. So for staff meetings, um, I really try hard when we are in person to just make them engaging and fun. Like they would want to look forward to at least, maybe not look forward to a staff meeting, but at least know that the staff meeting they were going to go to was going to involve fun and some prizes and just some, some lightheartedness. So again, one of those things, how do you transfer that over to a virtual world? Right, especially when they've been teaching all day on the computer, now show up at the end of a school day and come to a staff meeting. Right, so um, one of the things um, that I, I don't even know where our, this idea sparked from, but we played, a, we played a Kahoot game, right, to start our meeting mm-hmm. is guess the workspace. So I asked teachers to send me pictures of their home workspace. And oh. so I made a Kahoot game, so I would put the picture 
And then I would put like four different, you know, four different um, staff members and they had to guess whose workspace that was at home. And so I have, I, think I got quite a few of them. And so I, I still have another set that was another game that we're going to play for the next Stephanie. But that was the most fun, just trying to guess whose workspace that was from home. And, and they awesome. had a blast playing Kahoot, right? It, so it, that's another, another way to just have fun. Opens up, opens up other conversations. Oh my gosh, I love the, co I love the color of your wall. Or is that, what's that picture that you saw on your desk? I mean, just that's, that's awesome. And like um, some of the personalities totally fit, right? <laughs> oh yeah, some of them are probably yeah. <laughs> very obvious, and then yes. <laughs> other ones like Brent had his ear pierced. What? Like not <laughs> what? so obvious. Uh, right. Um, for for yeah, for people who know me, it's like whoa, that that's a surprise. Um, other thing is speaking of, this reminded me of staff favorites um john yeah. ike i mean who again we talked about in episode 83 who's amazing i got this idea from john to yes. uh staff favorites google form and again yep. teachers if you're listening this could also be done in the classroom students yep. favorites google form so at the beginning of the year he sends out a um a uh a form to his staff, and I've done it with mine. What's your favorite Starbucks drink? Favorite salty snack? Favorite sweet snack? Mm -hmm. T-shirt size? That just little things like yep. that. Favorite cold drink? Uh, not yeah. alcoholic, of course. Uh, favorite warm drink? Right, those of types course. of things. So then, throughout the year, all that goes into a spreadsheet. So if a teacher, for example, is just crushing it or goes out of her way goes out of his way to do something i just want to do something nice i can look into the spreadsheet and not have to guess right. what that teacher likes like, and if exactly. i'm in the starbucks if i'm in the starbucks drive through and it's like wow i need to get something for so and so yep um I'm going to be able to not guess. Well, I think she likes some mocha. Oh, yeah. It's like, no, she, or she hates You know mocha. their drink. You or, know their drink with all the extra fixings. Exactly. Or, or I've got one particular teacher. He didn't like Starbucks. It's like, that's not his thing. So I'm going to, I, I would want to get him something different. But there's, here's how we can take this one to the next level. Have you heard of Glide apps? I, I want to say I have, and I don't, but I can't put my finger what, on what it is. What, what Glide I think you told me about I may have. I may have. GlideApps.com. So anybody, I'm going to blow your mind right here. GlideApps.com takes a Google spreadsheet and turns it into an app on your phone. You are the one who told me that. So, I just couldn't figure it out. Yes. So what, if I do that staff favorites form, and GlideApps.com, it's free. You literally sign up, select the spreadsheet, and boom, just like that, it turns it into an app. It's really a website that you just save to your home screen, but it's right, right there. So, so I'm, I mean, you and I are Zooming right now. I can pull up my phone right now and hold this up to the camera, and I tap the little staff faves so that you're seeing right now, and it lists all of my teacher's names that I can I scroll that. through. And then I tap on one of the, so it's like, oh, so-and-so, for example, so-and-so, uh, Stacy, one of our te one amazing teachers, she won the little game that we had in our bulletin mm -hmm. this week. I need to get her a treat tomorrow. So tomorrow on my way to school, I can tap on Stacy's name and see what is her Starbucks drink. I don't have to pull up the spreadsheet on my computer. I just pull up my phone. It's yep, all, that's awesome. It's at my fingertips. You know, you I'm, do, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it oh, is, I'll finish while we're done here. <laughs> yeah, and, and you could, I mean, we've done our staff directory like that, where you take, you put it, you have, you have all that information in a, in a spreadsheet anyway. Well, now I can put it on my phone. So if I, well, what's so-and-so's extension? What's her cell phone number if I need to get a hold of her? Uh it's all right there at your phone. So glideapps.com. Glideapps.com. I forgot about that one. It is, yes. it is awesome. Yes. L lots of uses. So give, give us something else. All right. So um, I'll talk a little bit about students a little bit. Um, mm. So my, um, so I do, I've done for the past quite a few years, you know, 12 days before winter break. And so every day is kind of, and I used to, I mean, I'm going to have so much fun with it. 
Uh, it, it is work, but you know, it doesn't have to be so, so crazy. Well, how, okay, how can I do that virtually without me having to set up a hot cocoa bar or, you know, um, I don't know, like caramel apple bar. Like that's just yeah. not an option right now. So, um, you know, I, I got some ideas and I put together one of the days it was like, you know, your flannel day, you're kind of like your spirit day. Um, one today was, it was great. It was twinning days, so twinning Tuesday and they had to twin with the staff members. It was great to see all those pictures. Well, one of my teachers, she amazing teachers, she um, said, Jessica, I'd really like to host for the 12 days before we go on winter break, read aloud for the kids. But I want, I, I want to put out a spreadsheet and see if any staff members, different staff members will sign up for uh, read aloud every night at 5.30. She was, I will host it. I'm there. I'll be there at 5.30 for the, for the next 12 days so the kids can come on and, and listen to a story, live story every night. And I said, yeah, go for it. Let's do it. And sure enough, I mean, we easily had people sign up. So every night, Thursdays are last night, but um, every night she opens the meeting. The kids come and they come. We're, we're looking at them. We're talking to them. They're so excited. And a different teacher comes and shares their book, reads to the kids. And then just last week, I said, how cool would it be if we just did after the book, we did a guided drawing. A fun YouTube video that I found. I found a wow. bunch of easy five minute YouTube videos with holiday drawing. Um, so then after the read aloud, I put on the YouTube myself and my AP, we take turns, and the kids love it. They come, it gives them a half hour to listen to a story, to have some. They already know they have their paper and their pencil and their markers ready, I and they're it. drawing. And so that's what we've been doing for the past 12 days. And it's just such a great thing. But how amazing for a teacher to, to do that! right? To open it up to the staff. Uh, that's, that's, and are you doing it like through Zoom or Google Meets or it's, something yeah, like that? Yeah, so we do uh, WebEx, so we have WebEx, okay. but same thing, yeah, same. so we just do like a, a Zoom meeting like this, and the kids just know you got to mute yourself, and there's always a co-host, so we can always mute anybody, but it hasn't been an issue, and um, they, they've they been coming, and it's been great. That's, I, I love that idea. It, it um, back in the spring, we did it. I love the live because I've done, and I know that you've done uh, some live events. Mm -hmm. When you do it live, it's nice because people can comment. I think I talked about right. this in the last, yeah, right. but, the last mm -hmm. episode. But if anyone's listening, and you're like, yeah, I got little kids at home and I, I'm not going to be able to do that live. Even if you pre-recorded it, um, yep. which, which we did that in the spring. Everything was so new. School shut down. We were trying to do anything to keep that connection with our families. Yeah. And we did the same type of thing, put out a, a, Hey, who wants to read, who wants to record themselves reading a story? And Jessica, it was amazing because for pretty much like the last two months of school, we had a story every night. Wow. Like every night at seven o'clock, we had a story and these range, these range from, uh, Dr. Seuss books to mm -hmm. one of our third grade teachers reading from the Hobbit. Wow. Yeah. I mean like, and those where you think like, Whoa, that those were some of the most popular ones because oh, you I had, bet. he would just, he would, he would read it and he would read a chapter and then he would read the next chapter. It was, it was awesome. And it wasn't. And then we just, they put them on YouTube. I put it in a shared document mm -hmm. and said, just drop the link in here. Yeah. And then I worked on, I scheduled it on our Facebook page. So mm -hmm. parents yep. knew, check in at seven o'clock every night. And when, when we're done with recording this right now, I'm heading downstairs and I'm going to record a, another, a couple more holiday ones for, for the rest yeah. of this week. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just a great way. And it's new people. It, I like the fact yes. that it, I love doing it, but it's nice when it's not always me. Yes. Yes. And think about how, right, everybody on a campus has, has the responsibility to build a school culture. A brand, you alone mm. are not the school culture. I'm alone. I'm not the, yeah. I can't be the only one and you can't be the only one. That's just one person. But together, we all have a responsibility and an ability to be able to create a strong school culture. And that's how it happens. Gosh, I, I there's like the, the sound bite from this episode right there. Like everybody <laughs> yes. builds the culture. It's not, it's not just the principal. It's not just no. the assistant principal. It's not. And from a classroom perspective, it's not just the teacher. 
it's right. the, that student the students are involved in that and, and everybody yes. is part of of putting that together yes lottery scratchers oh you, yes the ones you, that you make yes that's i got i got i think it was ryan o'donnell um oh, ryan ryan great great q q friend great prod great podcaster check this out podcast with brian briggs okay shout out there uh you two gentlemen um yeah, the lottery scratchers where for anyone listening, you, you go on Amazon and you could just search for like lottery scratch off stickers mm -hmm. and they're just little silver quarter size stickers. So you can um, create your own lottery tickets and Ryan actually yep. has templates. If you go to Ryan at his Twitter handle is at creative ed tech. If you go there. That one. Uh, that'll have links to his website and on his website he's got templates for the scratchers and we have done that kind of before winter break before going into spring break just a fun yes. thing where yes. you, you just the little rectangular things you cut them out and in the circle you have the prize yeah and that can be a five dollar Starbucks card it can be a high five from Brent I mean, like, like a, 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 yeah. a, a fun size Snickers bar that's in my candy jar on my desk, <laughs> which, which they already have access to. Right. Those, right. But then it can also range, like, we've got the big prizes that are a free sub day. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I will teach your class today. You will have the day off, and you won't have to use one of your sub days. Right, you, right. You put those types of things out those there. Those are the big ones. The big ones that, that they, and we even put like everybody gets a free one and then you can earn or you can win extra lottery tickets to, for, for a chance to win. And those are right. the ones they want to win. And yes, classroom teachers, same type of thing. Imagine just, just that's fun. That's something yes, that's going to make. And I've, Go ahead. Yeah, I've seen, and I've seen the, um, so I have done those too. Those are the best we've been doing for like, you know, Thanksgiving or, or mm -hmm. just kind of like you said. And um, they, I have, I was just scrolling through some pictures the other day and trying to clean out my phone. I'm like, oh my God, I remember those. They came in with their little turkey. It was like on the belly. I had the, the fries on the belly on the turkey. Yeah. I think it was, I called them like tricky turkeys and I, I hit them around campus and you know, that kind of thing. But that's what they were. And um, I thought, you know what? I need to do that. I need to do that again. And then maybe on the new year, I'm going to send them home, right? And mail them home. Right? You mm. can stick them in a card and you can still do those and mail them home. And you just kind of have to get creative with what you can offer, right? Um, in terms of prizes. But still, this, it's still something that as a classroom teacher, I've actually seen some classroom teachers on Instagram do that with their kids. Um, and I don't remember what the prizes were, but, but still, it, maybe it's a little book that you mail home or yeah, whatever and it, it does, is. And it doesn't have to be like, the majority of the prizes when we've done it with staff, they're the yeah. funny ones like, a uh, high five from Brent. Uh, 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 right. Like, uh, oh. just, yeah, just like, oh, ooh, thanks, Brent. I just want a high five from you. Or, or I mean, or <laughs> selfie, selfie with the AP, selfie with Brent. I mean, which are fun things that they don't cost any money because, again, I, I'll, everything that doesn't have to cost money. And kind of going back well, to like, last episode, go ahead, go ahead. thank you, yeah. nerds, the, the You Rock Awards. That doesn't cost anything. But one of the prizes I was thinking that I had seen a teacher was um, lunch with a teacher, like bring a friend, right? To a mm -hmm. virtual lunch with a teacher with a friend. And how fun is that? I, kids want to do that. Oh, and they am. You would have probably done it anyways, but now you just make it a prize. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, that's huge. So do you have, you have one more? Yeah, let's see. Um, so one of the things that um, I think is a, is a great, and again, teachers, you can do this with your class, is highlight a staff of the day or a staff of the week. Mm -hmm. So um, I just went into our Life Touch um, portal, and I, I, I would find the teacher, our staff pictures. And so I would just um, highlight, sometimes it was, um, you know, every week, even if you scheduled a couple of weeks, by the end of the year, you've highlighted everybody, right? And so you just use a template. I just use Canva. I created a little template 
and I just put them, we want to thank, you know, you know, Mr. Coley, who's our principal. And, and sometimes I would ask them a little something about themselves or sometimes I just wanted to highlight the teacher or the staff member or mm -hmm. our custodian or our office assistant. And um, I would put that on social media. And so it was fun to, to create those. And it didn't take long. It really, once you created your template, all you gotta do is switch it out with a different, uh, with sure. a different picture. And you can schedule those out, but um, that's another way to really build up your, your staff and for your community to really know a little bit more about your staff. And as a teacher, mm -hmm. you think about like, okay, I'm going to highlight a different student every week, and maybe you're going to ask a little more about them. And this is another way for the class to get to know their classmates a little better as well. I, I love that. I love that. And, and I love the fact of putting it out on social media as well. I mean, and that's... I think sometimes it's easy to underestimate the impact that that would have on that, that first grader, that second grader. Again, you and I are at the elementary level, but mm -hmm. again, upper grade, prime secondary teachers, high schoolers don't, don't underestimate like, Oh yeah. P shoot. Teenagers want to be, I mean, even the shy recognized. ones, they yeah. want to be recognized. They want, they want Absolutely. to, as adults, they want, we want to be recognized. Of course. Exactly. <laughs> No, that, that, uh, boy, that's what a, we didn't even practice this, Jessica, that, but that's a, no. your last word is like a perfect segue into, um, my last one, which was, you talked about like highlighting a staff member is using Flipgrid to do at the beginning of the year, those meet the teacher yes. videos, um, yes. which, which I remember I did back when I was in the classroom, I, I borrowed my dad's flip cam and I did a classroom tour. Hey boys and girls, if you're going to be in Mr. Coley's class, this is kind of what the room looks like. I put it up on my website and only two kids watched it, <laughs> which I was like, only two kids, only two, but, but, but if those two kids slept better the night before yeah. that first yeah. day of school, when you're anxious, then it was worth oh, it. Yeah. And that was back on a flip cam. Remember flip cams or yes. years oh, ago? I, I mean, do remember those. That's, yes. I, this was before phones had good oh my video God. cameras. I used a flip cam, but now we all have our phones. So we got, I got the idea of Todd Schmidt. Again, shout out Todd. Mm -hmm. He did this for every one of his teachers. He, he did this, and then I did it with my staff. It was great. And I, I told the staff, record a short video. So I made a flip grid, made a, made a topic. Everybody went on and just said, Hi, I'm, I'm Mrs. I'm Mrs. Smith, and I'm going to be your first grade teacher this year. And I can't, I can't wait to meet you. And, and just for sixty seconds, for thirty seconds, smile. Yes. Show them your face. Let them hear your voice. Let them j j just let. Oh my gosh, that's who it is. So that yeah. that first day of school is less scary. And then you send out the links to parents. And with a QR code and the link that it's mm -hmm. like, all right, first day of school, go here and you can see your, your, uh, your teacher. Yep. I was just on that flip grid yesterday as I was creating a different grid for something else. The views for like the kindergarten teachers, it's like, oh, seven, I bet. It's like <laughs> 750 views because People it's want to watch it over and over and over that, it, <laughs> that, but also the first grade teacher the first grade students who had that kindergarten oh, yes. teacher, they want to go back and watch, oh, I had Mrs. Arabear. I had I Mrs. 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 And the second grade student, oh, they want to go back and see their first grade and see their kid. So again, what a great way to build the yep. culture before the school year has even started. So yep. teachers out there, if if and even if you're you're not doing the school wide, this is something that you could do. Just you. And then you email out that little, that link, hey, watch this short video of me introducing myself. And then have, or have the kids introduce themselves and to their class. There their we go. Um, one thing that just, you, you reminded me of, I just, I just saw um, on, um, and you know, I don't know if you know Andrea Gibble, but she, she does like a social, she's like social media. Um, she helps schools. I think she, she, she works with um, Joe, San, Joe Sanfilippo and, and the Go okay. Crickets. Crick okay. Anyways, she, I just saw an email come through about her uh, highlighting um, what kids are learning. So how to really ramp up your social media right now. And so uh, as we're talking about Flipgrid, Flipgrid, 
I would, you know, if you just put it out there and say, kids, record a video of yourself. What did you learn this week? And you can mm -hmm. just post that, you know, well, of course, with parent permission, post that on your social media and say, here's what kids are learning this week. And you just kind of put a little video together and say, how awesome is that? Yeah. That, I like the learning of the week. Going back to Joe Sanfilippo, who was amazing. Yes. It's like his, if you don't tell your story, somebody else, somebody Absolutely. else will. So Absolutely. Who, who better to tell our schools and our classroom story than the kids? In, in, oh, in, yeah. In Those their, get the most views. And you know in, that, Exactly. Right? In, their, yes. in, their, in their own voice. Hey, this is, this is what we're learning. So. <sighs> yep. And everything we're talk we've talked about here, Brent, is mm -hmm. exactly that. Right, is exactly yeah. that uh, when family, the community, school, um, students, parents, and staff, when they talk about your school, this is the kind of stuff that they talk about. And yeah. this is what makes your school what it is. And this is how you tell your own story. We do all these amazing things, but let the world know about them. You don't yeah. tell them everything, but let the world know because you never know who you're going to inspire. And that's what I have come to learn is, and, um, you know, you, you shared that. Yeah, Jessica, you share a lot. And I do it because not because, oh, look at Jessica, right? Look what she's doing. Look what they're mm -hmm. doing at Bernie. That's not why I do it. I've learned because I get a lot of private messages from people that I have no idea who they are. And, say, you know, you don't know me, but I've been following you for years. And I just want you to know that you inspire me by everything that you post. And you need to know that. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, it brings me to tears because here yeah. thinking, I'm just sharing what we're doing. Little did I know that you're impacting leaders and teachers and educators across the country. And, and if you do it for the right reasons, one, you're telling your story, but two, you don't know who you're inspiring. So teachers keep posting, principals keep posting, district personnel mm -hmm. keep posting because there's people out there who, who need the inspiration. And it might be your one post that says that lights that fire under them again. And you know what? I'm going to go back to being that on fire principal that it was or that on fire teacher that it was. And um, that's the power of sharing because I we love help one another. I, lo I love that. And by, and by doing those types of things, uh, a final shout out to Toby Price, uh, who's an who's a administrator in, in Mississippi who shares a bunch of stuff. And one of the things that he used to say about his school's motto was, where students want to be and where teachers want to teach. Mm, I love and, that. And when you build culture, and, it, and it's like, and you can even add where students want to be, where teachers want to teach and where parents want to send their kids. Yeah. That that's, yes. that's, and by doing these types of things, by sharing our story, by doing flip grid videos and having read alouds and, and doing the bunco nights and all that kind of stuff. That's, it's a place where people want to be. And exactly. I, I love, I want to work at a place that I want to be at <laughs> where I don't dread driving. Absolutely. To work you want to look day. forward to it. Absolutely. Sure. And, 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 it, and, we, and we want our kids Absolutely. running to the car, not having to be dragged out of bed. So yep. Yep. gosh, Jessica, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. My friend. I know. I know. I think so, we have to write a blog post and put all these things together. There we go. Show examples. Cause it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to see it. Yeah. No, I agree. Right? I agree. I agree. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I agree. When you see the pictures of the lottery tickets, when you see the flip grid examples and things like that, I'm, I'm, I do get to do a presentation on this in January. Uh, that's oh, County well, office, of, County office of ed. So if anyone's going to that little, uh, uh, <laughs> plug there. If you're going to the tech rodeo there, I will be doing a, a session on how to build classroom and campus culture with a lot of these. Well, let things me know if be, you need anything. So uh, you've are, you're already in it because <laughs> you've already given <laughs> some of those things and we'd be sure to, we, I'm sure to credit everybody. So, um, well, Jessica, again, for anyone who is not yet connected to you, where can they get, where can they connect with you online? So um, Instagram and Twitter at Mrs. Jess Gomez. Um, um, if you wanted to email me, Mrs. Jess Gomez at gmail.com. And um, you can get my blog post at Mrs. Jessica Gomez .com. And I did check out your blog after the last episode. And uh -huh. I find your, find your quotes. So uh, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, good, good stuff there, Jessica. Thank you again. I, I so appreciate it. Uh, you sharing these amazing ideas. Keep sharing. Cause like you said, of course, um, you're making a difference with me and I know you're making a difference with a lot of other educators out there. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on. This was really fun. 
You got it. Thank you. And for everyone listening, okay. thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe in your favorite uh, podcast catcher, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, etc. Or you can listen on my website, brentcoley.com on the podcast page. Once again, Jessica, thank you. Listeners, thank you. Mom and dad, thank you for listening. And until next time, <laughs> have a good one. Bye.